In this video, I'm going to talk about some advanced skin tone techniques to make your footage look fantastic. So I've got this shot that I just grabbed from Art Grid. It's just guy in the Amazon, it looks like. So the first thing we need to do is look at my project settings. The timeline color space is DaVinci Wide Gamut. The output color space is Rec 709 2.4. First thing I do, I change it this. This was shot on Black Magic. And then 6K, we are working in DaVinci Wide Gamut. That's it. So the workflow I use is a CST based. It's not DaVinci color managed. So the input is black magic. I'm changing it to DaVinci white gamut. This is where we're going to work. And then from DaVinci white gamut, our deliverable is Rec 709 gamut 2.4. To recap, black magic goes in, turns into DaVinci white gamut. Here, DaVinci white gamut goes to Rec 709 2.4. The tone mapping is up to you. The input tone mapping, make sure it is none. I'm just going to use a few nodes here just to get the image at a nice spot and then I'm gonna jump into the skin tones. So let's do the first one would be exposure. I'm going to change my scopes to waveform. I'm actually exposing for the skin right now. I'm gonna go HDR. And I am looking at my scopes using the global adjustment. And usually the skin tones fall between, it's kind of around here. Sometimes if it's a very bright day, it could be up here or if it's very dark, a little bit down there. But this is a good rule of thumb. So if you select here, the qualifier, and you make sure display qualifier focus, wherever your hand is over here, it's going to show you on the scopes. So his skin isn't bad. This is a good starting point. I'm gonna go label, exposure, we'll do balance, contrast and set here. Exposure, we've exposed for the skin. Maybe a little bit high, but let's see. You can always go back. Balancing, we go to vector. Balancing doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna play with the color wheels here. I always play with the offset to balance. I'm just moving it slightly to the left. And then we're gonna play with contrast. Contrast and saturation. Okay, so to me that image feels a bit dark. I'll go back to my exposure. I'm playing here with the contrast and the pivot. Play it through. Just looks okay. Let's just park it there for now. Next, I'm going to make serial and I'm going to make a few parallels. And this is where I'm going to show you that skin tone technique. I mean, you can use whatever workflow you kind of want, but I use this to get my shot at a point that I like. So this is the technique I want to show you. So in a previous video, I talked about where the skin tone should lie, and it should lie on this skin tone indicator that you see there. If you need to know how to do that, just look at the previous one. And this one, I'm going to go a bit more advanced. And the tool that I'd like to show you, after your skin tone is at a good spot, but you still want to improve it. I did pick this tip up from Darren Moston, by the way. This is not my idea. If you don't know who he is, insanely good colorist. I actually just finished a course from him and uh, wow. So we are at the skin and I'm going to use Texture Pop. So Texture Pop is really good if you have landscapes to add texture, but it's also good to remove texture. You put in the Texture Pop, you change this to Advanced, you change that guy to Luma, Chroma. Now you have all these tools to play around with. These are the ones you want to look at and also the tonal range. So you have all these controls and also where they fall on the tonal range shadows, midtones, and highlights. This is especially good if you have the skin tones at a good spot, but you just want that extra. Very good for beauty work. Let's see what it actually does to the image. I'm really gonna punch in on his face. If you go rough, see, you can see his face kind of changing. You can go coarse. I think for him, I actually wanna bring it out a bit more. A really good little key here is if you go into one direction with one, let's say you wanna smooth it out, right? And you wanna go medium, down, small down. At a point, it's gonna look plastic. So a good rule of thumb is if you go down a little bit, add a little bit of texture somewhere else. This is on and off. So this is on, this is off, this is on. But you can see it's affecting the entire image. Kind of losing a lot of detail in there. But maybe we wanna keep the detail over here, but just kind of smooth him out a bit. 
I wouldn't ever suggest keying in this area because you're working in DaVinci wide gamut here. The grade looks finished, it's because you've seen it after it gets turned into Rec. 709. If I show you what this node is actually working with, it's working with this image here. So if you key this, it might work, but it's pretty hard for it to know. There's a different way of keying in this type of workflow, but I'm just not gonna go over it in this video. But for the sake of sticking to the texture pop and the skin tone, now I've masked just him, a bit around him, but it doesn't really matter. Now you can see massive difference. I'd suggest you play around with it and see what works for you, visually what you like. It'll be different from project to project. But this tool, this little texture pop, after you get your skin at a good spot, it's a game changer. It's going to elevate those skin tones that you have 